here we go nothing like a sink full of tomatoes and there's the there's the remnants um, this is my old house it's a real shack Aaron here with Christian men going their own way back at you again here uh, coming from my 1920 Sears Roebuck house out here uh, in the corner of Minnesota so I uh, this is kind of addendum an addendum to my last video I figured I would show the other half of the process of raising food at least vegetables um, meat is a whole nother story and it's probably pretty obvious but um, I put in this garden here and uh, the last garden I had was I think 2016 or something like that and uh, I got I had a, ran 180 tomato plants and I put up about 200 quarts of pasta sauce like spaghetti sauce or whatever and that lasted roughly five years um, there was some corrosion issues with the lids um, but it would have lasted longer had uh, the, I've got water issues in the basement when the water table gets high around here the basement floods there's a reason the furnace is up on uh, concrete blocks so just the way it is around here with these old houses um, anyways someday I'll have a small modern facility but uh, for now this is what it is an old shack um, anyways so I figured I'd give a little bit of rundown of your, your pasta sauce process and what strikes me odd is when you go to the store and you buy a can of Pregu, Rego, Regu or Prego, I call them Pregu, you know, it's a it's two dollars there for a quarter pasta sauce. And I'm trying to figure out how all that works because I just spent my whole summer raising plants and uh and it takes roughly, well, we'll go over here to the stove here. Here's a, here's some of my work area. And if you do try something this, you might as well, if you do try something like this, you might as well plan on trashing your kitchen. That's what happens. So, um, these are uh, obviously liquid, liquid pureed tomatoes boiling down into a paste or just evaporating and boiling the water out of them. And... Right here, these two kettles is about, I'm going to say, three to four, five-gallon pails worth of tomatoes. Uh, so, I'm trying to figure out how they do this at the store and make it for a buck or two dollars. And when the amount of material going into what I make, is there's no direct correlation to what you get in the store. It's just, I don't get it. So I guess what I'm saying is, what are they? What are you buying at the store? Um, is the real question. So this is right here is my end result. This has got uh, hamburger, uh, and I put I had them grind the hamburger full of fat, so it was like seventy thirty, excuse me, seventy thirty percent hamburger uh, to keep some oil in there, so you got some. I don't know. It's grass-fed beef, so you're supposed to, and you're supposed to consume the oil because uh, it's it's a it's pretty good for you, I guess. Um, some may disagree, but uh, yeah, that's got onions, garlic, um, and spices, and it's basically a pasta sauce. So, so um, yeah, there's some more. Cor These are freshly done down here on the floor. Freshly done quarts. I gotta send them downstairs and. I'm going to label them and I'll probably spray the lids with a corrosion prohibitor, corrosion inhibitor, excuse me. So, um, basically this is pretty simple. Uh, I just take a tomato. These are fresh out of the garden just a little bit ago. I'll, if they're not quite ripe, if they're still solid, kind of firm, I'll set them aside and give them a couple more days like over here. These are going to sit. There's one of my black beauties. Um... And they're a little bit different tasting. I don't know quite to do with, do with those yet, so we'll see. But uh, so what I'll do is just take the tomato, knock, uh, cut the end, cut the ends out of it, core it, kinda. And if there's any impurities, I cut those off. And I just try to keep the process as clean as possible. I just have a plate here, and I just rinse it off all the time, and then 
dice up the tomatoes enough to, to so I get a good inspection on them so I don't have any rot, st rotten stuff going in there. Sometimes there'll be a rotten section of the tomato internally and you, you won't notice it until you cut it up. So I, the bigger tomatoes I try to cut in at least eight pieces um, or, and smaller ones go into halves and quarters. So, And then from there, move over to here, I'll fire up the blender, plug your ears. It might be a little loud, just warning you because it's a noisy kitchen here. By the way, I forgot to say, I do rinse the tomatoes off and kind of scrub them off a little bit. So, um, just for preparation purposes and cleanliness. But if you look at the rest of the kitchen, you say, well, probably doesn't matter, but that's, I try to keep stuff clean. And so then we just do this number here, not too hard. And then repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat till you're, you're sick of it. And then eventually, uh, I think these two kettles should yield about, if I get them good and full, I should be able to get 25 to 30 quarts produced out of these two kettles. So you figure five to five or six five-gallon pails full of tomatoes to get you that many quarts, plus, um, you know, you factor there's 25% of the quart is filled with meat. There's 25% of the quart jar is filled with meat, so and then... Uh, Anyways, after this process of boiling down into a paste, I have a homemade stirrators. Oh, where's one here? This is an, an ice cream maker. You can buy at the store for like 30 or 40 bucks, and I retrofitted it, and I cut, I, this, this little plate sits on top of the, uh, the kettle there, and once the tomato paste starts getting thick, it doesn't transfer heat as well, it starts to burn, so... I took the I took the ice cream maker bottom and turned it into a paddle. So that whole thing sits on top of these kettles over here and is a continuous stirrator so I can boil the paste down faster. So it used to take about a full day to boil this down into paste, something like this. But I got it down into four hours using a stirrator and then you can run the stove on high. And then it, as it starts to thicken, you got to taper the heat back. Otherwise, it just scorches on the bottom of the kettle. But... Uh, the biggest difference I found when I bought some of these modern kettles that have the uh, they have the composite bottom on here. It's a ceramic aluminum composite bottom on it, and I think there's copper in there too. I'm not for sure, but it's the or something. But it's the uh, the induction ready uh, pots for the induction stoves. The uh, it's, which heat through magnetic inductance. Um, I tried an induction stove. It was a piece of crap. It didn't have any watts. It couldn't, it couldn't do near with what these old coil tops did. And these old coil top stoves are the way to go if you're going to do something like this because they have immense, a tremendous amount of heat. Even, and even here's a propane stove. They, these put out way more heat than propane stoves. There's just, there's no comparison. So, and after that, I'll, uh, after these boil down in, into a proper consistency, um, I'll just pack that, put some meat in the jars. I'll scale the meat and put it in the jars. And then uh, drizzle it and uh, ladle the paste or the tomato paste uh, and spice mixture into in, in, mixture into there. And then they'll go into a pressure cooker here and run for in about two hours uh, and uh, at about 245 degrees under pressure. And then you end up with this, I guess. So. Um, that's what it takes to produce food, I mean, and make, make it last, and it's a lot of work. And I chose, I chose to do this kind of stuff so that uh, when the time comes that things don't work like we anticipate them to, I have, re, have a redundant lifestyle. I know how to do this. And with the, all these shenanigans with this COVID nonsense and the, the globalists trying to... Uh, well, they've been saying they're going to reduce the world's population. It looks like they're trying to get it done on a, on a, in a soft kill form and uh, slowly so that they don't get detected, I would say. But they're not going to get it done. They're going to have to go to, go to a hot nuclear war to get done what they want to do uh, to bring in Lucifer's kingdom. But I just figured this, you know, 
you can't just jump into something without any experience and expect it to work. That's that usually get, leads to catastrophe. So I've been gardening for off and on since I moved out here about 10 years now and I kind of know what it takes and I'm, I'm sure you can tune into any other channel learn just as fast as I did but it's not a big it's not a big deal I mean it just takes practice and you got to pay attention to what's going on with your your plants and all everything else it's just like anything just like anything if you're going to make it work right you got to put time into it um all those tomato plants out there, I spent hours and hours pruning them, zip tying them up the fence, uh, cutting off branches that uh, are unproductive. And uh, it's, yeah, it, it's just an immense amount of work. But, you know, if you were to step back into a, if, if, a, if, a, if a man and a woman were to live a lifestyle like this, um, I'm sure they would be a little happier getting along. I'm taking a wild guess, but... I don't know. So that's that's what it takes to produce food, I mean, on your own. And people used to live like this a hundred years ago and they, they live seasonally. They they uh, worked all spring, summer, and fall to store up for the winter and to, to uh, try to make it through to the next year. So it's it is what it is. But in my last video I I I, I come down a little hard on military people. And if I offended anybody, I apologize, but people have got to wake up to what's going on around the world with the United States military. We're, uh, the United States is an empire, and we have basically world domination as far as military all over the place. And <clears throat> I've talked to enough guys that are discussed, former military that are pretty well disgusted with the things go on and the more research that I do and other other people do um, it's just it's got to stop somebody's got to stop this military industrial complex from ruling other nations there's there's nations that have absolutely nothing and we keep blowing them back to the stone age and and you look around this nation of America and all the fat slobs the fat disgusting slobs out there that is this what you're going to go to war and, and going to head overseas and go to war against some other people that have done nothing but are just trying to survive with the little that they got? And meanwhile, we've got everything over here. We're fat, disgusting, and lazy. People got to wake up. I mean, if you didn't know what was going on back then, you know, that's fine. I mean, you just got to speak up about things. And I don't mean to condemn anybody. And I was in the military for a brief period. I'm I'm kind of happy I got kicked out because I had a crack in my right leg from from um, I've got high arches on my on my feet. So I am glad that I didn't get any farther in the military. Now that I know what's going on, I don't have a problem with defending the homeland. But we haven't been attacked. And anybody that says we've been attacked, I got to ask him when have we been when have we been attacked? We haven't. We're we're doing the work of Israel. So this visit, this vid and the Zionists will probably get. We'll, I'll probably get this video flagged or removed, but I could care less. I'll redo it. So um, the Zionists are going to bring loose, bring in loose first kingdom. So <clears throat> we got to be aware of that. I don't know if I got a good aim on this camera or not, but I guess that's not important. So that's why I get pretty vocal about the things that I see because things need to be talked about. And there's too much stuff going on that needs to stop. So, anyways, back to the, there's the tomato again. It's a sink full. Uh, just this is just from the night here in the last few hours of whacking tomatoes apart here. So, anyways, uh, guys, uh, Aaron here with Christian Men going their own way. I just want to give you a tour and of uh, what it kind of what it takes to do this. And uh, I think my. Uh, my my paint dried paint drying rambling is going to be over here i can't think of anything else other than yeah i do need to clean the kitchen some more and do some repairs but what the hell no one else is there's no one else here to impress so guys have a good night